Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about timeshares and why we don't use them. So to me, a timeshare is basically the MLM of the travel world. And here's why I say that. So multi-level marketing, scam, ploy, um, legit business sometimes, basically relies on somebody having a product that they sell but then the way they make the most money is to get you to then sell it excuse me and timeshares are the same way so a timeshare you buy into time for this basically hotel room that you share with other people so the way that they get themselves out there the best is to get you to get other people to get into it. So you have this 1960s, 1970s, sometimes decorated place. Sometimes the, sometimes all of the appliances are from that year. You know, they're almost never updated. It seems like the ones I've been to anyway. And uh, they, rely on you telling your friends tell your friends let them know what's going on so you're not going to see too many timeshare ads because they rely on you to get the job done so also i have my notes so i'll be referring to number one the biggest thing for me is the limitations okay so let's say you have two thousand dollars a year to travel with okay all timeshares all of them you know the worst ones to the best ones there are some good ones out there that maybe I would do if I had to let's just do it let's just do it this way from the worst to the best they all have an upkeep cost so what that means is every year you pay them and the lowest I've ever heard is 1280 I think that's what I use now I use 1250 so 1250 that you have to pay them that every year whether you use the timeshare or not okay so that's just your cost you have to pay that everybody has to pay that so what that leaves you with to do to buy your food because they do not provide food of any kind to do any of the cool stuff that might be around the timeshare um, because they don't provide anything for that either your gas all of that that leaves you with 750 now that might seem like a lot but depending on where the timeshare is and what you want to do that usually isn't that much. You usually need more than that <clears throat> to do that. So if you're talking about sometimes Disney, Disney does have timeshares and sometimes they will give you vouchers for food in Disneyland. So if your whole thing is I got to go to Disney, Disney is my, Disney is my goal, then that is maybe the one timeshare I might be like, okay, you know, I can see you spend the money there. But mostly that upkeep costs of that 1250 it's usually more in the two thousand dollar range it's usually more there it's not usually as low as 1250 so you have to do all of that and you only have two thousand dollars to do it with then it doesn't leave you a whole lot of money so basically all you're doing is pay to live in a hotel room eh. and sometimes these hotel rooms are not that great sometimes they're like condos and usually they're not always that well kept up. My grandparents had three of these. Okay. So you think about that. That's almost $5,000 a year towards just a place to stay. If that's all it gives you. And only for a week. You can usually only do a week unless you buy more or trade with somebody who maybe bought two weeks or something like that. So if you think about it, then they would go in there. Okay, we would all go in there. And just like a hotel room, sometimes it's not clean. They provide you dishes, but sometimes the dishes aren't clean. Sometimes the dishwasher is broken, and the person who used it before, guess what? Didn't tell them. So if I'm getting a hotel experience, I would much rather pay less, get a free breakfast, and not even have to worry about dishes because there's no dishes in my hotel room. Another thing, number two, probably the last one really, because the third one really actually ties into number one. But let's go to number two. Is value for cost. All right. So you circle back to that twelve fifty. You've only got that seven fifty. You only have a week. Let me see what else I say here. 
Okay, so these places are not large either. For the amount you pay for the upkeep, you can stay in a castle. Quite literally, I'm not joking about that. There is a castle in North Carolina that's $7.50 a night for two people, I believe. And you can stay there for a week. Or let's just say you did it for three days. That's still three days in a castle with 12 rooms, five bathrooms, acreage of land versus like a room in a condo or a condo or like just a some of them are just hotel rooms they're literally just hotel rooms that you pay so you can be close like maybe to the water or something where the hotels are cheaper and just as close to the water so these things are just like they're useless they waste your money they waste your time you would do better buying an rv or even just saving to go to a hotel than you would to buy one of these <clears throat> All right, so the third one that kind of actually ties into number one is you're limited as to where you can go. So each timeshare has an area where they service, let's say. So let's say if you buy it on the East Coast, then where you can go is, let's say, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, let's say Georgia. All right, now if you wanted to go out of that, then you had to trade with somebody, pay a special price to get out of that area. So it's just to me not worth it. I can take the same $2,000 and go across the country and stay wherever I want, basically. <laughs> For me, that's just not, you're not free to go do where, where you want to go. The amenities at these places a lot of times are not much different than what you'd find in a hotel. You don't get any sort of, for example, if I stay at Timeshare, I don't get an exclusive play with dolphins thing, where if you stay at certain hotels, you do get things like that, all right? So hotel stay, just a lot of times, can give you more value for the money that you're going to spend than something like a Timeshare. And I think this is why they rely on word of mouth so much, because... They really don't have, it's really not a whole lot of value. I mean, I, the, when I travel, I travel to not only see an area, but to go ex, have an experience somewhere, to try different food, go play with dolphins. There's a place in Florida where you can actually swim with manatees, or if you don't want to swim, you can get a boat and ride along the river with them. That sounds awesome. You know, there's no hotel helping you get there. The, the, the timeshare doesn't help you get there. Timeshares, just like hotels, will give you like pamphlets of stuff that's happening and sometimes like campgrounds, they'll have little like potlucks or something where you can participate with other timeshare owners. But why would I do that? Like I could go to a campground for way less money for the twelve fifty that I would have to spend for the upkeep. Again, whether I stay or not, whether I use it or not, I have to pay that. <clears throat> For that upkeep, I could actually go on a boat trip. I could do, you know, the castle. I could do somewhere in the mountains. There's just, just not tying your money into a timeshare lets you experience way more than that. And when you try to get out of a timeshare, that becomes difficult also because they don't want you to, to go. They want to keep getting that money for that little box of a room that you get. So that's just the way we think about it, guys. Let me know your experience with timeshares down at the bottom. Do you think my numbers are off? Do you have a different experience? Just let us know, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.